All right, guys and gals, just got home with the 2005 Forester LL Bean Edition. Just picked it up this morning. You may have seen it on Instagram or on my YouTube community page, po community page post. Uh, mileage unknown. I believe it to be about 200. Uh, no battery in the car when I bought it. And... Uh, the timing cover on the driver's side is off and the timing belt is hanging out of the bottom of the cover. So we are either gonna go to JDM Engines Inc. in Charlotte and pick up two JDM engines, one for this Forester and one for the Silver 05. Or I might be able to put a set of heads on this car and get it up and going. Or even better, I might be able to replace the timing components retime it and it run i highly doubt that with the fact that the belt's hanging off and they did try to start the car multiple times with the belt also um, pretty safe to say that just about every valve in both cylinder heads is uh bent at this point but uh it never hurts to try that uh 98 legacy gt i had had the belt fall off of it and uh the cams were all out of alignment. I got it back in check and uh, leak down test, compression test was fine. I drove that car for five or six years, sold it to a guy and he's still driving it after a year of owning it. So that's what we're gonna do now is uh, get into this thing, see how bad out of time it is, try to put it back in time, see if I can get it to run cause I'd much rather drive it off the trailer than have to push it around until I get an engine. So that's what we're out to do. Let's get into it. Well, we're back. Battery died on the GoPro. Sorry about that. I'm really getting uh, fed up with GoPro. Batteries never last. I'm about to find an alternative to uh, film on. But anyway, Subaru owners, this is why I tell you to change your timing belt and change it as a kit. Change all your idlers, your water pump, and the belt all at once. Don't replace just a belt and do not go over the recommended 85 to 95,000 miles. This is an original Subaru Misaboshi timing belt on this 2005 that has around 200,000 miles on it. What we have here is pretty classic. The idler completely failed. Here is the outer guts of it, and it is an original NSK Japan 
idler pulley, but uh, with that kind of mileage and that kind of run time on it, it doesn't last forever. So we've got metal shrapnel in here from the bearings and the idler where it tore apart. All I can assume is it seized and when it did, the uh, crank rotating around ripped the belt in half. The belt is torn. It is severed. And uh, we have a lot of catastrophic failures down here, especially on that bottom idler. I know you can't see right now. The shadows are horrible. It is uh, right around noon, so uh, lighting is not great. But this idler down here is the one that uh, gave up the ghost. Normally it's this cogged pulley which uh, I can't even rotate it by hand right now. It's completely seized as well. So it looks like this one's seized and put tension on this one and fold that one came apart. Cause this one still spins, this one spins. The tensioner pulley, uh, it is chunky and there's a lot of slop in it. Water pump spins, but this cog pulley, it is completely locked. That's normally the one that fails. And actually, yeah, that is the one that failed. It wasn't this one, my mistake. The uh, outer cover just landed over here, but yep, this cog pulley by the water pump has failed. It is completely seized, locked up. That's what tore the belt, and that is what uh, stopped this engine, and most likely has destroyed this engine. Most likely has bent every valve in it. Uh, hopefully not, but uh, I'm gonna get all this taken off, get everything cleaned up. I'm gonna go buy, uh, grab some of my used uh, timing components out of the shop. One of my used belts, retime everything, put a new tensioner on it, or new used tensioner, uh, and see if this thing will even fire off. Most likely it's not. Most likely there's no compression left in the engine. The valves are probably gone. So uh, fingers crossed we might be able to get it to fire up and run. So let's see. Like I said, that 98 GT I had, the same issue on this one. I'll put a little clip up, but it was the same one. It was a far worse failure than this. Uh, and I was able to retime it and had no issues out of it, but uh, that was an extremely rare case because that happened when the guy was starting the car, not while it was driving. Uh, with the violence that happened in the, this uh, belt ripping apart, it was probably running down the road, probably uh, quite a bit of speed, so it probably uh, came apart violently. So, uh, like I said, I'm going uh, to get it all cleaned up and pulled out and uh, see what we got here. All righty, all the components have been replaced with some uh, decent used ones, a decent used belt's been put on, everything's been cleaned, put back in time, just snug down the balancer, lift the timing covers off, uh, threw the alternator belt back on just because. The car did not have a battery with it, so I don't know what the mileage or anything else was on it, so I'm gonna go steal Patch's battery real quick, and it'll be the moment of truth to see if this thing is going to run or not. Fingers crossed, guys. All right, battery's hooked up. Throttle body is uh, twitching. Relays are popping on and off. Moment of truth, will it run? And we get to see the mileage, 213.321. Whoop. Let's see. Cross your fingers and toes. Oh, she runs. Oh, she runs, guys. Doesn't sound great. There's probably some uh, loss of compression. There's probably some bent valves, but it runs. Can't believe it. Last Forester I had with a timing belt broke on a single overhead cam, put a new belt on, it wouldn't do nothing. She's running. Looks like we got a head gasket though. Look at all that white smoke. So, <laughs> looks like we'll be pulling them heads after all. But hey, it runs. It'll move under its own power, hopefully. Hopefully it's got enough power to move itself. Hot dog, she runs. And she runs pretty daggum good once it uh, smoothed out some. I'm not liking all that white smoke out the tailpipe. Most likely we've got an internal head gasket issue. Uh, I don't know how long this car sat. I don't know if it's got crappy gas in it or not. I don't know how the condition of the spark plugs are. Could need a tune-up. Could be some crud burning out of the exhaust. Depending on how long it's been parked, I don't know. What I'm going to do now is take the serpentine belt back off, pull the, uh, pull the crank pulley back off, uh, put the timing covers back on, put the fans back in, put it back together like it's supposed to. Uh, drive it a little bit, see if the uh, AC works, see what all is actually wrong with the car. Uh, if most of that checks out, I'll let it cool back down. We'll do a compression test. We'll do a uh, cylinder leakage test to see if we actually do have bent, bent valves. We might not. I don't know how, 
uh because almost every time a single overhead cam snaps a belt it's bye bye engine bye bye valves but uh this thing's running way too smooth and nice to have a bunch of vent valves so somehow they might have lucked out and got out by the skin of their teeth and i might have lucked up on a great deal on this car after all i was planning on putting an engine in it but i might get away with it so uh like i said that's what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna put everything back together like it should be and see what we got all right guys so this is why i always stress the importance of changing your timing belt changing it on time and replacing a full kit don't just replace the belt that's just stupid and i know that cost is a factor for most of everybody but uh if you're gonna do it do it right uh on second review of this this is an aftermarket misaboshi it's not the factory subaru misaboshi belt because it's only marked misaboshi there's no subaru on here so they did replace the belt but they did not replace the components these are all the factory uh components that's the factory coil bearing that's the factory uh nsk bearing and the factory nsk idler as you see this booger slam locked up the front cover came off it shot out bearings it shot out the bearing casing that bearing casing shot out like shrapnel it was embedded in the timing belt cover it was embedded all around inside of the timing cover i had to dig all of that out get all that uh freed up but that's what happened the uh bearing just finally gave up after 213,000 miles it had had enough these things don't last forever guys they're quality japanese bearings but they do have a service life and this one was far exceeded this uh cog slam up seized would not move engine was running had to be a weak leak somewhere the crank powered by internal combustion was not the weak link this seized pulley was not the weak link the weak link was this carbon kevlar timing belt and it just ripped it apart pulled teeth off and shredded it in the middle threw the belt out the uh cover and she was done for this was a one in a million chance guys there any other day of the week this would have been vent valves and a totaled engine essentially um i looked up like i don't know what by being able to retime this engine throw the components use components on it just to test it it firing up and running without a hitch uh asterisk i don't know if it's without a hitch yet just listening to it and uh seeing how it's running no check engine light no misfires very smooth idle uh, i don't see any evidence that valves were dinged if they were they were just barely kissed enough to maybe drop compression a hair but not enough to lose compression in each cylinder like i said in a later video we're gonna pull out the spark plugs do a compression test do a cylinder leakage test just to 100 guarantee the health of those heads valves in this engine but just from the way it's running i'm pretty sure it's uh safe uh still gotta investigate the timing uh the head gasket issue if there is one uh, the smoking subsided, so I don't think uh, it was anything more than burning the gunk out of the exhaust and the old fuel. So uh, the uh, coolant looks kind of funky, the coloration of it, and uh, it, the reservoir was overfilled. So maybe they just overfilled it. Maybe they were overfilling it because it was eating coolant and burning coolant because of a head gasket. I don't know. Like I said, we'll do the cylinder leakage test, pull the radio cap off, see if we got any air escaping through the coolant, and uh, confirm our head gasket, good or bad then. And uh, another note, this is the factory Subaru Fuji NTN automatic belt tensioner. It was failing. It might be failed, I don't know, but as you can see, it's wet with hydraulic fluid. It's stained with hydraulic fluid where it's been leaking for some time now. Again, these things are quality Japanese parts, but they do not last forever. They do have a service life. And uh, that's why we replace these things every 85 to 95,000 miles. 
preventative maintenance. You'd rather replace it before it breaks than have to deal with this because like I said, this is a one in a million that this isn't a catastrophic failure of the engine. So this was a lucky day for me the day after my birthday. So uh, yeah. Well, I'm still finding it hard to believe that this car is running as well as it is. All of the, uh, I've got everything put back together like factory now. Um, got all the belts back on, time of belt cover, fans, everything's like it should be. Running smooth as can be, no check engine lights. The smoke from the exhaust is cleared up, so I assume that was just a mixture of condensation and junk burning out of the exhaust, as well as some of the old gas that's in this car, because I don't know how long it's set for. Car has four brand new tires on it. I mean, they're great condition. They're only, I think they're uh, 2018 stamped or 2017 stamped, so only a couple years old. Uh, turned on the automatic climate control and it is blowing cold air, which I am appreciative of because it is 82 degrees out here today. Uh, I'll give you a quick look at the inside. Uh, I'm about to wrap up this video here. We'll do an in-depth uh, full inspection on this car later. But looks like I'm gonna get away with just a set of spark plugs, a new time belt water pump kit, uh, changing some fluids, and she will be ready to resell. Although, <laughs> kind of liking this car enough myself to keep. It ain't bad for $500. And yep, it is an LL Bean edition. Cargo cover intact, all weather, rear. We've got the full size spare tire, no donut on this car. That trim piece has gotten loose. There we go. Clip back in. So the plan now, like I said, I'm still gonna do a compression and leak down test just to make sure this engine is nice and healthy. Probably put a set of plugs in it, tune up fluids, time out water pump. We've got a massive dent here in this bumper. Gonna show a vi uh, film a video on getting this uh, big dent out of here. Basically we take a heat gun, heat this up and we can pop it out from the backside. Uh, we have a few dents and dings, nothing too terrible, some sticker residue. Take that off with some cleaner wax. Uh, a small dent here in this fender and the main damage is here we've got a dent here we've got two or three here in this body line i've got a snap-on paintless dent repair tool i'm going to use that to try to pull the majority of this but we're not making this uh perfect there's a small dent here and we got another dent here this one i should be able to pull out to almost uh unrecognizable once i'm done but other than that that's about it so uh yeah great day i think i actually found why the car is salvaged there is a giant crack in this humongous panorama uh sunroof i'm not sure what the salvage is for but that's a good indication that between the few dents and dings and this cracked glass all the way across this big panorama sunroof because if i remember right from subaru you can't buy the glass it's an assembly and i think it's like forty five hundred dollars or more so between that that fender the door and the bumper and painting it that's enough to total this 2005 so i'm pretty sure that's all the damage we got i don't smell any must there's no uh, visible evidence of flood damage water in the car um no rust at all under the car it's a southern car as clean as can be underneath so pretty sure we got a winner here guys hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time